Hi, this is Dr. Wong, and today we're going to be talking about the electrodiagnostic findings of a Martin Gruber anastomosis. A Martin Gruber anastomosis is a communication of a nerve branch between the median nerve to the ulnar nerve in the forearms. The communication contains motor nerve fibers that innervate intrinsic hand muscles that are usually ulnar innervated. There are four different kinds of Martin Gruber anastomoses. Type two is the most common, which is where the nerve fibers innervate the first dorsal interosseous muscle. Type one is innervation to the hypothanar muscles. Type three is innervation to the thanar muscles. And type four is a combination of any of the above. The crossover usually occurs in the proximal third of the forearm. The communicating nerve fibers may originate from the median nerve or the anterior interosseous nerve branch. Nerve conduction findings may appear differently depending on whether or not the patient also has a median neuropathy at the wrist. So for example, in a normal patient who does not have a median neuropathy, when recording at the abductor pollicis brevis and stimulating the median nerve at the wrist and antecubital fossa, you may find a larger compound muscle amplitude with the proximal stimulation at the elbow than at the wrist. When studying the ulnar nerve and recording at the abductor digiti minimi in the hypothanar eminence, the wrist stimulation may produce a larger amplitude than when stimulating the ulnar nerve below the elbow. This is due to the crossover and contribution of the median nerve fibers that were not present at the below elbow site and are now present at the wrist site. Alternatively, in a patient with a median neuropathy at the wrist, nerve conduction studies when recording the abductor pollicis brevis at the thanar eminence may show an initial positive deflection when stimulating the median nerve at the elbow. This positive deflection reflects initial depolarization somewhere away from where the recording electrode is. This positive deflection would not expect it to be present with the wrist stimulation. A spuriously fast conduction velocity of the medium forearm segment may also be detected as the median nerve fibers that are traveling with the ulnar nerve are bypassing the focal compression which is occurring at the wrist. Ulnar nerve studies would not be expected to be affected if the patient has a median neuropathy at the wrist. This is an example of the waveforms of a patient with a type 2 Martin Gruber anastomosis. In the first tracing, this is recording over the abductor digiti minimi in the hypothanar eminence. There is no significant change in the amplitude between the wrist, below elbow, and above stimulation sites. When the electrodes are moved over to the first dorsal interosseous muscle, there is a significant drop in amplitude between the wrist stimulation and the below elbow site from 17.7 to 8.61. When the stimulator is placed over the median nerve at the elbow, an amplitude of 9.1 is recorded. This amplitude is the difference between the wrist stimulation and elbow stimulation sites for the ulnar nerve. You can see when stimulating median nerve at the wrist, there is no uh, waveform produced. If the median nerve had not been checked, this study could have been interpreted as a conduction block of the ulnar nerve in the forearm. This slide is demonstrating the nerve conduction study findings uh, when recording the median nerve at the abductor pollicis brevis when there is a Martin Gruber anastomosis present. In this example, the wrist stimulation reveals a prolonged onset latency of 8, which is consistent with uh, median neuropathy at the wrist. When the median nerve is stimulated at the elbow, there's an 
a positive deflection there, reflecting that the there's depolarization somewhere away from where the recording electrode is placed. There's also a spuriously fast conduction velocity of the forearm segment of the median nerve.